Welcome to the Historian's Hut. First of all, we need a name for the audience. Are you Huttites? Are you Historians? Are you Time Travelers? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Write your favorite name in the comment section, or even create your own. We'll see what we can do. Well, back on topic. We're here to talk about Chuangzu, or, depending on its spelling, or the source, Chuangzu, Chuangzu, Zhuangzi, Zhuangzao, Chuangzhao, but I'll just pronounce it Chuangzu. Anyways, Chuangzu or Chuangzu was a 4th century BCE ancient Chinese philosopher, more specifically a Taoist philosopher, who was from Ming, which is modern Hanan, and lived around the same time as Mencius. Here's a picture of the guy. Mencius was a Confucian philosopher who believed that human nature was good, except for a few psychopathic anomalies here and there. But this isn't about Mencius, this is about Chuangzu. Chuangzu is a witty and wise philosopher, but better yet, all of his works are written in a humorous and simplistic fashion that anybody can read. This episode is devoted to one of his characters in particular, which really stands out. His name is Crippled Chu. This section I'm about to read is from Chuangzu's Basic Writings, translated by Burton Watson. This is at the end of the section titled, In the World of Men. This is what the section says about Crippled Chu. There is Crippled Chu. Chin stuck down in his navel, shoulders up above his head, pigtail pointing at the sky, his five organs on the top, his two thighs pressing his ribs. By sewing and washing, he gets enough to fill his mouth. By handling a winnow and sifting out the good grain, he makes enough to feed ten people. When the authorities call out the troops, he stands in the crowd waving goodbye. When they get up a big work party, they pass over him because he's a chronic invalid. And when they are done doling out the grain to the ailing, he gets three big measures and ten bundles of firewood. With a crippled body, he's able to look after himself and finish out the years heaven gave him. How much better, then, if he had had a crippled virtue? Now that that reading is over, let's recreate the character. Looking at this model, it's gonna take a lot of work. Let's cut off the head. Let's take off the legs. Now we're ready to go. Alright. His head stuck down to his navel. His shoulders were above his head. His pigtail pointed to the sky. His organs were located at the top. We'll leave that to imagination. His thighs pressed against his ribs. He had arms, because he washed and he sewed for a living. And that looks like Crippled Chu. Now remember that Chuang Zhu sets this character up as a very, very virtuous person. Now you might think, how is he more virtuous than an Olympian god? Or an extremely muscular person, or even just a normal, average human being. For Chuang Tzu, the answer was very simple. There were two things that he valued. One was being unique, being fully yourself. The other was surviving as long as you can, living out all the years that you have on Earth. Crippled Chu had a huge advantage when it came to living out a full life. If you were an Olympian-like person, you might be called to war. You might be dragged off by your state to fight in battles and likely be killed, while Crippled Chu would be passed over because an invalid wouldn't be wanted in their army. Now, if you were just a strong person in a time of peace, it was still a time of tyrants and authoritarian rulers, so you might be dragged off to work in a project like the Great Wall of China and never return, while Crippled Chu would be left behind because all I could do was carry a wash bucket. Now a normal human being can live a long and happy life. The government may even send some food and some water. Nothing too enthusiastic, but you'll get by. Crippled Chu will also get these rations, but because of his state, he'll get extra rations, which will help him live longer and in more comfort and general joy. So the moral of Chuang Tzu's story is this. Even though Crippled Chu was a cripple, he didn't die to warfare, he didn't die to labor or construction, he didn't even die to malnutrition, thirst, or hunger. In the end, he lived a long and happy life, which for Chuang Tzu was the best kind of life. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.